Today I'm going to show you how to make cheese sauce two ways. One is using Velveeta cheese, the other from scratch. I like to think both ways are easy and convenient, but it just depends on what you feel like making or eating. Here we go. So to start, I'm going to make a nacho cheese sauce, and this is what I've been making lately. It's easy. Here I have eight ounce block of American processed cheese. I'm going to use half of this sour cream container. It's about four ounces. A third cup of milk. I'm going to add paprika and onion powder to taste. One or two tablespoons of the brine from my pickled jalapenos. And I'm gonna start it off with half a tablespoon of unsalted butter. So I'm working with a low flame or low heat. Here in my pan, I'm adding the butter. Now I'm going to add around a quarter teaspoon of paprika, an eighth of a teaspoon of onion powder. Let it warm through. This goes really quick. I'm going to add my cheese. This is eight ounces of American processed cheese. Here I'm adding half of this eight ounce container of sour cream, my milk, jalapeno brine, and just give it a mix, combine, and let it slowly melt. Nothing on high heat. You want this low and slow. And then you have a really delicious cheese sauce. Sometimes I like to add cream cheese in place of the sour cream. It all works. And this is the cheese sauce that I use for my layered cheesy beef enchilada recipe video. I'll link that recipe video below, but I've been using it lately. It's easy and it's something that goes great for different recipes. To get started, I will be using two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, a pinch of salt and paprika, I have a quarter teaspoon of both. I'm also using a cup and a half of milk and four ounces of softened cream cheese. I'll also be using one eight ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese grated. Okay, so in my preheated pan, I have added my two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to melt these down and now I'm going to add my two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And basically, the name of the game is I'm making a roux, and this roux, in turn, is going to turn into a bechamel sauce. You guys know, in my cooking, I always make bechamel sauces for a lot of things that I make, so here we go again. So I'm just going to cook out the flour, and I'm also going to be adding my salt and paprika. Again, this is a quarter teaspoon of each, and this also helps the paprika sort of develop in flavor since it's a dry seasoning it kind of warms it through and gets things going so if you don't have paprika don't stress over it add your pinch of salt and just keep moving i'm going to start adding my cold milk to the pan this will ensure that i don't have lumps or so i'm told and guess what it does work so i'm going to start like with a half cup and then just gradually add the milk until it forms a nice smooth creamy sauce. I'm just going to continue adding it. Okay, so my bechamel sauce is nice, creamy, and smooth. I'm now going to start adding my cheeses. In goes my four ounces of softened cream cheese, and then I'm going to gradually add the cheddar cheese and work it in until everything is nice, creamy, and smooth. By the way, I failed to mention this earlier. When you're doing a bechamel sauce or making your roux, you want to work with a medium heat, nothing on high. But then once you get to the melting stage of the cheeses, you want to lower your heat. So right now I'm working with a low heat because you don't want to scorch or scald anything in the pan. So after making your roux and bechamel, go ahead and lower the heat and that's a good tip to start melting in all of your cheeses into the sauce. Okay, so here is a delicious, creamy and smooth nacho cheese sauce. So those are two easy ways to make nacho cheese, whether it's on Frito pie, walking tacos, or just a delicious nacho cheese dip. It all works and it's easy to make. I hope you give these recipes a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.